Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days, and uh, this is a comment that I recently got on one of my YouTube videos. So thank you, all of your videos helped me a lot. I recently got my first job as a queue engineer. I like the job and I want to develop in this field. Over the past two months, I faced a lot of uh, newbie difficulties, but I managed to get past it and improve. However, I'm facing the issue that my leader keeps on throwing jabs at me to make me feel small and incompetent. He's trying to prove that he's the boss by being flaky and giving me feedback. He intentionally micromanaged me into doing something wrong so he could throw the jab again. As an experienced QA who succeeded in the job, can you give me some advice on how to deal with this leader? Should I stay for only a short time to gain experience and then hop to another company? Uh, more information on the project that only involves two people, this leader and me. Okay, so um, it's always hard to deal uh, with people in the work environment where you feel that you're, you know, you're being put down and misjudged and there's a lot of pressure or incompetence um, and someone's trying to put a blame on you all the time. So I definitely get this. Uh, I would say if this is not going into the domain of HR in terms of like discrimination for whatever reason, I mean, there are things that you can do if you're being uh, legitimately discriminated against, right? Based on where you're at, your location, you can look into the laws and see, uh, you know, if you're being discriminated, actually being discriminated against, right? So you can follow up with HR on that. Uh, there has to be some sort of a pass for reporting this type of uh, abuse, right? Uh, but that's, if that's going into that domain, if no, if you just feel that this is like microaggressions uh, and overall trying to put you down and prove that you're better, that the manager is better than you, well, there are multiple ways how you can take it, right? Uh, but what I would recommend is just uh, ignore the things that are, you know, going directly towards you and kind of just let it go through uh, in the sense that you want to take as much as possible uh, from the professional experience and stay professional. If it if you can avoid the whole thing affecting you personally, like if you can take criticism saying you did this and this wrong and uh, take it professionally and ignore the whole personal stuff and start working better on the criticism, write down the things that was said and kind of build up on them, what you can improve and how you can do that. Ask for more feedback, say what else can I do? Uh, ask for things that you should work on. So try to work with the person that is giving you jabs and trying to put you down, but to get as much things uh, as possible from that person in terms of what you can work on. Leave all the unprofessional stuff outside of it, outside of the scope of your mind. So literally don't take it personal and just keep on growing and building on the skills that that person sees you need to work on. Um, might be you know a tool that you need to grab, might be the way you report things, how they're done in the company. So literally whatever is being thrown at you, uh, take the professional part and try to implement it and ignore, ignore the rest. Obviously, this is done only for one reason, that you can grow professionally as fast as possible. So through the criticism, you just ignore it as a person and keep on working on the actual skills as a professional. And then once you start feeling confident, uh, you either change uh, the conversation essentially saying, okay, now I can do this, this, and this, and you can ask for a better position, you can ask for a raise, you can ask for a transfer, whatever the case might be, or you just start looking for other jobs and find something that suits you. So um, the core idea, or actually you could say there are three things that I would recommend. First, uh, if there is a way how that is actually being discriminatory and you can pursue that through the uh, HR, and have a conversation about this, you know, uh, you should follow along your company policies, right? That's the first thing. The second thing, uh, try to personally ignore the insults and uh, grow on them professionally. And once you're there, the third thing is you either stay and kind of uh, prove yourself, you know, that you want to take something different, like different project, different team or different approach. Uh, maybe you want to lead a team, but you're, you've grown enough in the company to move outside of that management. 
um, or even provide a feedback saying that those things are not working for you. Or uh, if you're feeling that you know you've grown enough to grow in the company, that means you also grown enough to uh, move outside and find something else, right? Um, in any case, whatever the the thing is happening, I would say don't take anything personal at the job. Never, just don't, uh, and try to um, take as much as possible professionally and grow professionally. Whatever being thrown at you, even if it's you know if it seems personal, just take it professionally. Something's being asked of you, and you think it's maybe not needed or ridiculous or that's just done because they want to micromanage you say yeah sure and start working it ignore the whole thing uh that comes with it for your personality just for the sake of your own growth and once you're ready move along right um it's always hard to work with people like that it's always hard when you know you feel that you've been pushed around micromanaged put down um thrown under the bus but ultimately, your goal in this career, right, as a QA, as a tech professional, is to become better professionally and grow. And at some point, you'll find a position uh, and culture where you're going to like it and you're going to like the team and you're going to like the people. And, uh, you know, you'll feel comfortable and happy going to work. So staying at the place like this, if you can't change the game, I mean, definitely it's not great and I would not recommend it, but growing in a place like that is absolutely fine and you should, uh, you know, focus on the growth part, professional growth part and move when you're ready. Uh, one additional thing in communication like that that I remembered of and I think very important to add, uh, leave as much paper trail as possible when you think that you're intentionally micromanaged into somewhere that you're going to fail. So don't have a conversation saying you should do that, report that. I'll give you an example. So during my experience, work experience, I had someone managing me, asking me to schedule tests that would take at least a week to run to get the results when we needed results in a couple of days uh, in order for the release to get through. And I did explain that, you know, it will take quite an amount of time and we're not going to have all the test results in place that I should be reporting on. Uh, if you'll, if you'll ask me and you, you, you'll tell me, okay, I want this and this and this to be rescheduled. If, I, if I'm going to do that, we're not going to have results on time. So I was still given direction, you know, you should schedule it so we can get the whole picture, even though it's, it's not going to be in time for the release. So uh, one of the ways that you sh should protect yourself when something like that happened is ask for the communication in text. So that could be clarification of details through the stories, the tickets and Jira. That could be chat. Uh, better if it's not just personal chat, but like a group chat. If there's a group conversation, team conversation, you have, you can have the discussion there. Uh, or simply, you know, email, and I, I get it that it is your team lead, so there's not a lot of people, you, just two of you, not a lot of people you can uh, CC on that email. Uh, but let's say you're in a situation where there are multiple people, maybe a QA team, so you can have a discussion with the whole team through the email as well. So you're clarifying, you're asking for more details, saying, hey, we had this discussion that you wanted to schedule uh, the, the test to run for a week. Uh, could you be more specific on which test should I be scheduling from priority one group, priority two group? Maybe we had some tests that were not run the last release, something like that, but get some clarification in text. So if it comes down to blaming you, intentionally blaming you, saying, hey, uh, this person didn't do what I asked for, uh, you can always present the proof that this is what I've been asked to do, and this is what exactly I've done, especially in the situation where you've been micromanaged, because um, if it's all done verbally and the task is continuously you know, thrown at you, you have that many hours in the day, right? So you can't, you can't do all the tasks if the person has, is asking you to do 80 hours of, uh, of work in like 40 hours, something like that. Obviously, you can't do any of that, right? So the best approach would be in this sense is agree to what you can do, right? Say, this is what is possible. 
based on the hours or you can hey here's a follow-up on your request and now have it in writing say you know you've asked to schedule that much things and to do that much things but um this and this test is going to take for like a day to run so this is i have essentially you can provide the time scope how much you can do in in amount of time you have and clarification of what you know what can be or should be prioritized or suggestions so you have some communication that um, you are doing your job you are reporting uh, what needs to be reported and you're doing it in time within the possible time frame given you can test you know accordingly uh, so if it comes down to blaming someone you always have a bug to show that you opened even though maybe it wasn't fixed you always have a report on something so there's always a paper trail to back you up okay so some something i wanted to add all right so that's it